Ready. Chapter 26. Hannah hastened from the kitchen to the shop carrying two platters of cookies. Bess followed behind her more slowly so as not to spill the full pitcher of ginger shrub she was holding. Mrs. Blake and Ellie from the hotel had brought stacks of tin plates and cups for serving. The shop was full of people. The bells on the doors were jingling almost constantly. Everyone was talking, looking at the goods, nibbling and sipping the refreshments. The button box was of great interest, as was the window display, with customers crowded around both. Papa took another pitcher of ginger shrub out to the sidewalk where a group of men folk had gathered. Hannah noticed that he was wearing his good boots, which gleamed from the polish she had given them. Miss Walters greeted Hannah, then took Hannah's hands in hers and gave them a little squeeze. Bess and I had a very interesting walk yesterday, she said quietly. You were right, Hannah, to send her to me. Hannah looked at her and nodded, not trusting herself to speak without tears. Miss Walters smiled. I'm thinking about visiting a visiting dress. Will you show me the poplins? The raffle was a tremendous success. Papa called out the names to applause and exclamations of surprise and delight. Miss Walters won the needles. Mrs. Murphy from the drugstore won the button string. The posy of ribbons went to Ellie, who declared that she would wear them all at once, making everyone laugh. Hannah was especially glad that Ellie had won a prize. Mrs. Wilson at the hardware store won the lace. The winner of the grand prize sewing basket was Mrs. Schmidt, the pastor's wife. Then Papa drew Mr. Grantham's name for the men's raffle and called him inside to claim his prize. More applause and laughter greeted him as he went to stand next to his wife. Mr. Grantham, who owned the furniture store, had a full mustache and mutton chop whiskers. Mrs. Grantham had a round girlish face and graying brown curls. Both were plump and pink skinned. Mrs. Mr. Grantham looked at the card that Hannah had made. 20% discount? All right then, Wilma, you can order that dress you wanted. Whatever are you saying, Harold? Now that you've won the discount, I'm going to order too. The morning was not perfect. There were customers who greeted Hannah icily and spoke only to Papa. A few addressed her as they might a servant, tersely, without using her name. Still others said not a single word to her, but the overall sense of gaiety bubbling through the room helped her ignore any unpleasantness. She and Bess stole a few moments together in the workroom. Thank you, Hannah said, her smile tremulous. It occurred to her that her family's fortunes had become tightly meshed with the Harris's. Mr. Harris was the reason she and Papa had come to La Forge in the first place. Bess was helping keep them there. At the same time, Hannah was helping Bess by employing her, and perhaps in other ways too. You're welcome, Bess said. Pause. That was a fine idea of yours for me to go to Miss Walters first. I couldn't have done it alone, and she, well, she wouldn't have done it without you, Hannah finished for her. When I saw that line of people outside the door, I could scarce believe it. How did you do it? We made a plan, Bess said. It took us a long time, the whole morning and again after dinner. We laid out to say different things, depending on the person. I wrote them down and read them out loud until I knew them nearly by heart. That was Miss Walter's idea, to make it almost like a reading lesson. She said that if I knew well what I wanted to say, I wouldn't be as nervous saying it. She was right. They had begun by telling the ladies the truth, that Hannah was fetching lard cans from the hotel when the two men attacked her. I said I'd seen for myself the marks on your shoulder. Then we would remind them of the times that Mr. Swenson had gotten into trouble before because of drink. That part was always easy for them to credit. Bess reported that with some of the women, she and Miss Walters could talk about the shop. Mrs. Grantham and Mrs. Murphy and a few others, the ones who wear their Sunday best even during the week, I told them that I'd seen the dress goods and how lovely the shop is and how good you are at dressmaking. Bess grinned at the memory. Really, they didn't need much persuading. Other women proved more difficult to convince. Bess frowned. It was strange. None of them seemed to have any problem believing that those men were at fault, but still they made excuses. She glanced away, her face growing pink. Hannah guessed what Bess did not want to say, that certain women were reluctant to patronize the shop because Hannah was half Chinese. 
Some people are just, Hannah trailed off, unsure how to finish her thought. Rotten eggs, Bess finished for her. A moment's pause and they both burst out laughing. After they caught their breath, Bess went on. At Pastor Schmidt's, Mrs. Schmidt mentioned that your father tithes. So then we told ladies that staying away from the shop would mean less money for the church. That's what I told Ma too, and Mrs. Blake. Bess stopped her expression suddenly aghast. It's all right, Hannah said. Whatever it is, I'm sure I've heard it before. Bess nodded. She said she didn't know that Chinamen could be Christian. Hannah had indeed heard that before. I didn't know they couldn't, she replied. A brief silence. Hannah had saved the hardest part for last. Your ma didn't come, she said. Oh, well, ma got all the washing in off the line and had to iron this morning, Bess said blithely. She said she'll come one of these days. Hannah knew that ironing was not the only reason for Mrs. Harris's absence, but it seemed that Bess wanted to think the best of her mother and Hannah could hardly blame her. Mama could not have been perfect, but that was how Hannah remembered her. Mothers and daughters. She had a blinding flash of insight then about her encounters with the Indian women. During their first meeting, Wichapiwan could have observed that no one except Pa was making the journey with Hannah. Wichapiwan might well have surmised that Hannah was motherless. I thought it was me being kind when really she was the one making sure that I didn't feel left out. The opposite of how Mrs. Harris had made her feel. She wondered if she'd ever get the chance to thank Wichapiwan. Do you think your ma will let you keep working here? Hannah asked. Papa had taken no fewer than seven orders from women who wanted dresses made up, more than enough work to keep Bess on until she had to leave to teach school. Hannah had already begun designing the dresses in her head, and every one of them would have a tiny pink lotus embroidered somewhere on the inside. Yes, Bess said immediately. She let me come to the opening. She even told Pa to give me a ride here in the wagon. Perhaps Mrs. Harris's reason for allowing Bess to continue working at the shop had more to do with family income than anything else. But Hannah wondered if the change of mind might one day lead to a change of heart as well.